with all this talk about martial law, the president is effectively signaling to his devotees that he thinks that would be a cool idea and that might fix things for him. So if any of his devotees have ideas for how they could do something extreme enough that might create a plausible pretext for really putting the military in the streets, well, the president is now signaling to all of them that that would be handy to him. That might help him. The president threw down 20 pardons and commutations last night, another 26 pardons late tonight. Somewhere in the world as we speak, America's most devoted enemies are watching and they are really, really, really enjoying what they are seeing. One of our top stories again today. Look at these pictures. So impressive. Many of the people who work on Capitol Hill say it was, they haven't seen anything like it since 9-11. These are members of the U.S. National Guard receiving their weapons before taking up their positions around Washington. Security concerns and fears of new violence are growing after last week's attack on Congress and yesterday's second impeachment of Donald Trump. About 20,000 of these National Guard troops will be in the Capitol ahead of next Wednesday's inauguration of Joe Biden. That is reportedly more military right now than the U.S. has in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. Think about that. So many National Guard are in Washington, there's no place for them to sleep. Hundreds of them on the floor of the Capitol building. This video captured in the hallways, images that recall accounts from the U.S. Civil War when Union forces at one point bivouacked into the House and Senate chambers. So some historic references, because these are unprecedented times, and this is the level of security now and through the foreseeable future uh, there in Washington, but not just in Washington. Because federal authorities, Mr. Maples, have warned not just of the potential of, for violence in Washington, but in all 50 state capitals. Hello, ladies. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Doing good. Um, how do you guys feel about our rights being violated at the U.S. Navy base oh, right now? Talk, we can't talk about that stuff, sorry. Well, my rights were violated? Not when we're in uniform. Well, you're supposed to protect the Constitution, right? I can't talk about it when I'm in uniform. But that's it's not a personal matter. It is a personal matter. If you, have, if you swore an oath to the Constitution? Correct. Yeah, well, that's a personal matter? matter? Bro, I don't, I don't want to talk to you guys. Well, you should because you, 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 you should because we love our we love our we love our military personnel. But you're going to be in auditing America at three o'clock, okay? You guys just violated our rights over there, not you personally. I wish you ladies would have been there to stand up for our rights. Well, we are the bosses. We're the bosses, and you guys really, really messed up. What's up guys, new update, Friday 0630, Washington DC, and it ain't the police doing the checkpoints no more, it's full out military, holy shit, I want to show y'all something, see this, see this military right here, all armed, I'm about to show you something very scary, these are big, checkpoint gates I'm gonna show you something this shit is fucking crazy this isn't Metro PD this isn't the Secret Service or the Park Police these are Humvees with M60s and saws and M4s and they're all loaded and that don't look like riot control to me but check this out look at these barricades with these personnel tunnels and shit to go through. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. Understand that where we're at, the Republicans and the Democrats today are just the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They both believe in the system. They're both fighting on behalf of Rome. And they're doing whatever Rome needs to. And Rome allows them to, for the time being, have their little religious things and their little religious laws and all of that stuff until it doesn't become politically or economically feasible to continue to allow that or they become a little bit too powerful.
And they do things to please Rome too, right? Very much. So instead of pleasing God, who they're supposed to be pleasing, they're really honored to be seated in these high places in Rome. That's all they're concerned about. And we talk about that a lot. You know, we see a lot of this and obviously this QAnon movement and Mm -hmm. that ridiculousness. And, you know, anytime someone puts their faith outside of the Father Mm -hmm. into a party, into a man, a woman, a movement, the Father will ensure those things are torn down. Those high places are torn. That's what it means to tear down a high place, a principality. See, here's what here's what it is. We look to the high place, mm-hmm. not the principality behind it. But principalities set themselves up in high places. They do. And then they're offended and moved on to somewhere else. That's why you can't look at that high place as being a, or an ideology as being right or wrong because one day it'll be right, the next day it'll be wrong. The next day it'll be right, the next day it'll be wrong. See, it's that tree of good and evil, right? It is, the, but setting themselves up in high places. Where is that high place, folks? Where is the high place? Setting themselves up in high places, demons, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit, be aware they are on the loose this place is flooded you have demonic forces that have a very specific agenda and you can see it taking place not talking about taking names we're not out there to to cause any destruction we stay away from that do not pick a side there is no difference between the pharisees and the sadducees do you know why because they're the psyop they're the psychological operation to keep you divided and to accomplish everything that the real enemy that runs them, those children, those chosen ones, those chosen ones, those 10 kings that sit up on top of all of the economic systems and all of the wealth and all of the power, you don't even know their names. I can promise you that that's how they can keep themselves that way. Nobody knows their name and you don't utter the name of God. I guarantee you, you don't utter the name of God. That's why the rule is there. You don't utter their names. You don't know them, but they're running the show and they work on his behalf. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees are just the psychological operation. You've got the CIA, FBI, everything. People do see this crumbling. That's why you even have the QAnon. That operation has allowed them to neutralize everybody for the past two years when everybody knew this was coming. And if you're not on one side or the other, Derek, we will be, because we are in the middle and we refuse to be boxed into Republican or Democrat or your ideology or your ideology, they'll both turn against us. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want you to understand. It's not going to be a pretty place, but guess who gets to be the scapegoat, folks? Mm -hmm. Guess who that is? The scapegoat, you're, uh, I can tell you, we'll all be scapegoated. They'll do that to all of us. You have to be prepared to go there. You have to be prepared because their projection of your sin or why you deserve something, it's just a threat. It has zero to do with who you actually are. And that's the beauty of Christ. That once you know that, it doesn't matter what label they give you. I don't care whether they call you blue, red, terrorist. It doesn't matter. You know who you are in Christ and you know you're not guilty of any of the things that they say because they know not what they do. And that's why Stephen could say that while they're stoning him. So they tested God. It's just amazing, continually. And it, and it continually gets fulfilled. They have, it's an insatiable appetite. It's like you just can't stop the abundance of everything, the worry about, oh, I must do this. I have to, you know, I have to be somebody. Those identities are being destroyed right now and they're going to get further destroyed because these things are going to be settled with who's who on this planet. You're going to understand actually who played the largest role in this. I think a lot of people make the mistake of believing if we can achieve a certain political or earthly shift, then that means it will result in a spiritual or a heavenly shift. Your will be done, not mine. Even if it doesn't look like what I want, your will be done. The Bible says this, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have the thing we've asked of him. So it is powerful and it's important right now that we pray, God, your will be done. Because listen, I want to tell you, I'm not praying for the elephant's will to be done. 
I'm not praying for the donkey's will to be done. I'm praying for the lion's will to be done. You know why? Because the lion outranks the elephant. The lion outranks the donkey. The lion, as a matter of fact, he outranks the serpent and he outranks the dragon. So that's why we pray, your will be done, Father. He's accomplishing something here. And it's all going to be for his glory and it's going to be for our good. Now let me leave you with one more thing. The Bible talks about how God says, the earth is my footstool. Heaven is my throne, but the earth is my footstool. Think about this. All the, when you're sitting on a chair and you're raising your feet up on a, on, a, on a stool, where's the most of your weight? It's on the chair. The minority of your weight is on the stool. And God says, the earth is my footstool. And I believe that that's something he wants us to mirror. He's saying, don't put all of your weight and trust on earth. Now, yeah, we got to put some of it on here because we live here. There are things that we have to do here. Uh, we have to see people saved. We have to communicate. We have to interact with the world. But he said, put the, put the majority of your weight in heaven where, where the throne really is. Put all of your trust there. Put all of your hope there. Put all of your eggs in that basket. Because when we pray his will be done, he's going to get the glory. You're going to get good out of it. And we're going to see God bring revival to this nation like we've never seen. Because when you're in Christ, you are in peace, even with this terror coming. It doesn't mean you're not concerned. It doesn't mean you're not worried. It doesn't mean you don't weep tears. The difference is you know what happens. Amen. They don't. Somewhere in the world as we speak, America's most devoted enemies are watching, and they are really, really, really enjoying what they are seeing.